Well, hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith, and today we are going to be doing a strategy guide for the Corvid Conspiracy in Root, the board game. Now, we've talked about a couple of the different woodland creatures within this game, but we have not discussed one of the two new factions that come in the Underground expansion. Now, as the Corvid Conspiracy, you are trying to convince the other players that you are really what controls the power in the woodland. And so you need to be whispering your little lies and secrets into their ears and spreading conspiracies throughout the inner city. They're definitely one of the lighter reach factions. They have the same amount of reach as the Woodland Alliance at a solid three, so not much board presence. Let's go ahead and go through some of the tips that I have for you, and I hope that this helps you guys play better. If you like what you see, please leave a like and comment, as well as subscribe. Um, that will really help me with making future content that you guys will enjoy. All right, I hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you later. Now, as the Corvid player, you are going to want to keep under the radar. You don't want to be too loud in the beginning of the game because having your opponents think that you're a threat right off the get-go is going to really be hard. The only bright side to it is that if they're starting to attack your face down plots, you have embedded agents, which means that you get to just remove a warrior. And this is really going to protect a little bit and kind of make them realize that maybe attacking them isn't going to be economically worth it for them. One thing that I absolutely love to do as the Corvid Conspiracy is to try to act like I'm not choosing the plot that I'm placing down. Act like I, it was a random choice. Uh, like, you know, convince the other players that it was a gamble to put down the plot. Now, obviously, you know what that plot token is, but it just makes it that much more interesting to pretend that you randomly chose it and placed it face down with, you know, some sleight of hand. Because then your opponent is thinking, ah, well, I, I, you know, me guessing what it is is completely random as well. Like, he has no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. And so, you know, you can't think strategically about it, or at least your opponents can't. So that is one of the things that I think is a really, really cool little social trick that you can do when playing the Corvids. Another helpful thing is to try to keep together a group of about three Corvid warriors. Uh, slowly, you're, you're going to want to try to get a couple of them in one clearing, and you can use that group to either put them in a clearing with another plot token so that you can activate it next turn and have something to defend it to make sure that it can go off, or maybe you're using that to lay down a plot token and have it ready to be flipped up for next turn. So there's a lot of different options if you have at least one flock of Corvids going around throughout the clearings. Now, keep in mind that low warrior count factions are going to be some of the best to place your plot tokens in because they're not going to want to lose those warriors. And so I would say that the Woodland Alliance and the Riverfolk Company are going to be two factions that are really, really good to try and infiltrate their inner society and make sure that your tokens aren't getting removed. And another tip that I have for you is to try and infiltrate one faction. If you were able to lay multiple plot tokens down within one faction's region, like let's say the Marquise for example, they only have a certain action amount per turn and they're going to want to try to move towards their goal instead of just stomping you out. If you're putting plot tokens in all of the factions, each of them can maybe use one action to remove that plot token. But if you're infiltrating with multiple plot tokens in one faction's society, it's going to be too many actions to remove them all and you'll probably have a couple of plot tokens left over. A raid token is one of the most powerful tokens to get face up as soon as possible. Now remember to place the raid token in a clearing that's connected with as many clearings as possible. But when it's flipped face up, your opponents have to gamble whether they want to make you spawn crows or not. Because they're not going to want to remove it, but at the same time it's going to be scoring you those extra points every time you flip another token. So getting those raid tokens face up as soon as possible can be so helpful. Now the Corvid Conspiracy's card wealth is very high. They work very similar to the Woodland Alliance with crafting. And so I've got a couple of cards that I think would really benefit them from both decks, the Exiles and Partisans and the base game deck. So starting with the base game, I've got 
Sappers, which in battle as defender you may discard this to deal an extra hit, and just having this in front of you will help with making your opponents not want to attack, especially if they're going up against face down plot tokens because they could just have two hits right off the bat. Stand and Deliver is another great card for them because in Birdsong they can take a random card from another player, that player scores one point. And this can be helpful because sometimes you just really need to recruit in one color clearing and you're just not drawing it. So having that option and getting that extra card draw if you can't get any of those extortions up can also be really helpful. And the last card in the base deck would be Favor Cards. And it is such a powerful card to be able to remove all enemy pieces in one type of clearing. And for the Exiles and Partisans deck, I've got the Master Engravers, which whenever you craft an item, you score one extra point, which you should be crafting a lot of items as it's gonna be very easy to do with your plots. And then next I've got the Coffin Makers. Whenever any warriors would return to a supply, you place them on this card instead. And at the start of Birdsong, you score one point per five warriors here, and then return all warriors here to their supplies. This can be pretty easy to achieve as the Corvids because whenever you're doing battles, you're obviously gonna be losing warriors, but whenever you're placing down multiple plot tokens in a turn, you're gonna be losing a lot of warriors as well. Even if you place down two plot tokens in a turn, that's still three warriors off the board and into the coffin makers, and you only have to get two more warriors in to score a point. So this can be an extra way to get some points, and if none at all, it's at least going to keep your enemies from wanting to attack you and get you more points. And last, we've got the Swap Meet. Once in Birdsong, you may take a random card from another player and then give them a card. This is kind of a better version of Stand and Deliver, and it can really help you get that card that you need to match the clearing for recruitment purposes. So be on the lookout for these cards. They can all really help as the Corvids. See, now there needs to be a coffee break in between every one of these tips, but I just keep going and going and going. So I just kind of take these on the side. So you're not seeing anything. I'm just sipping some more coffee. Which by the way, what a cool mug. Thank you, Kyle Farron, the artist of Root. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful mug. Makes, makes playing the game easier and also makes my life easier. The other thing about the Corvids that makes them so great is that they are nimble, meaning that they can move throughout clearings without having to rule. This makes little raids very, very easy, especially because you can recruit and get a lot of birds really easily. Be looking out for wood supplies of the Marquise or really any buildings and tokens that are left pretty lightly defended or not defended at all. Now what I like to do is I like to use the bomb plot tokens as a bluffing technique to scare factions. Um, mostly I like to put it inside of a location and just convince the other players that it's a bomb so that the other players try to use exposure and you get a free card. Or at the very least, maybe it really is a bomb and you know they psych themselves out and then it explodes and blows up all the little woodland creatures. <laughs> That's another good favorite part of mine, but the Corvids are really fun, trust me. It's not all about blowing up animals, okay? There's, there's a lot more to the Corvids than blowing up things. Please. Who am I? <laughs> However, I will say that one of the nice balance changes that they made is that if you blow up a bomb and the Vagabond is in there, that damages three of their items. Keep in mind and don't let those Vagabond players cheat and keep all their items when they're blown up. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of Corvid players do is overextending themselves during their turn. Try to think realistically. Can you actually place down two plot tokens without, you know, leaving nothing on the board? Because if you don't have anything on the board, more than likely they're gonna get removed and it's gonna be a waste of resources and you're gonna have to start this whole thing again. So my tip would be to be content with getting one plot token face down Per turn if you have to and make sure that it's defended so that way you can at least get it face up next turn you've got to do something to start getting that ball rolling and start getting some face up plot tokens if you're overextending yourself every turn it's gonna be so easy to get those removed Thank you so much for watching my video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it helps you play the Corvid Conspiracy better the next time you play 
root. Now, before you go, if you liked this content, please drop a like as well as comment down below. And if you want to be notified when my next video is released, go ahead and click that bell notification. Now, I've got links to my Instagram and my Twitter down below. If you want to follow those, you can figure out what video is coming next. But with that, that is it for the video. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.